Hi, I'm Zayna Juliet. Dana, Juliet, and friends. Stay tuned for great conversation and music each week. Today is a very, very special show. It is my girl power segment. And we went through some submissions and everything. And what we came up with, I chose, and uh, ZTV, we chose, ta-da! <laughs> These four beautiful, fabulous artists right here in Las Vegas. Now, last week on the show, you got to uh, watch them in action, their music videos, and what they are working on now. Now today you get to meet them here on the show. And we're going to talk about their careers, their future, and what is to come with all of these wonderful ladies. And I love them all so much. Let's start. Let's get right into it, girl. Let's introduce ourselves. We got Ivana. Hello. We got Ivana Christie. Um, fabulous artist. Like, if you're really into that, I love Ivana's that soulful, bluesy. Yes. Uh, what we? How can we say? Uh, okay, like I said last time, you're like Patti LaBelle, Aretha Franklin, mm. uh, all those type type of artists. That powerhouse, Ivana Christie. Adam Beasy. Yeah. Adam Beasy is also not just an amazing, uh, talented artist and host. Um, Ambezi is also a radio personality on 88.1, which we all love. How do yes. we say? 702 Wake, Wake Up, up crew. crew in the uh, building. Hey, hey. Uh, Ambezi is rocking that station. Yes, ma'am. Love that you with DJ Thump. Yes, I my brother. <laughs> we just love us some DJ Thump. Yes. yes. Oh my gosh. To my left here, we have the fabulous Mini Blue. Minnie Blue, look at her. <laughs> look at me. She's beautiful, sultry vocalist, bluesy, bluesy, soulful. Oh my God. I mean, I really, really love your sound. And the powerhouse vocalist here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Miss Denise. Denise Thank is you. rocking it. She's doing so much. In fact, we we were discussing before we started taping, we knew that we were going to have to do probably another two shows to cover everything that these ladies are doing. Vegas artists, original artists, independent artists. Yes. We need to support each other, and we need to support Vegas independent artists. And I'm the Yes, ma'am. You and I both know that, like, Vegas artists are not getting the love and support that they should have. Absolutely. And why do you think You know, is? It's, it's interesting because when we first had that conversation, um, I told you before I even got into music, I was acting. And yes. I have been going to L.A. ever since I started acting when I was 16. Never had one audition in Las Vegas. Um, when I started working on music, I was dying to shadow artists or collab or go yes. see our local artists. And every artist that I would DM, every artist that I would be like, hey, I've checked out your music, it's great. I would love to, you know, just kind of sit in. It was never met with anything friendly or it was always kind of like, um, it's, it's kind of like everybody tries to stay in their own lane. It's kind right. of everybody for themselves. Right. And it's interesting because going to work on music anywhere else, like in LA especially, it's the complete opposite. Complete opposite. You could be in a yes. studio session and somebody could be in the studio next to you and, and just hear you. Over. Yeah, and they'll come over and be like, hey, I like your voice and you wrote this. Oh, let's, let's collab on something right All then and time. there. And so I think that Vegas is missing that heart. Yes. Everybody's so everybody's so focused on being the big thing out of Vegas that they're missing that yes. we can create 
that environment here. Which would give the other um, people, or I don't know if this program directors or whatever here, um, open their eyes yes. to um, exposing more original artists. Absolutely. What do you think about them? Well, I kind of think that um, partially is, you know how it is, you go out of, out of your, where you live yes. to become discovered and then that's when your hometown embraces you. Yes. I don't know why that is, it's wherever you live, mm -hmm. yeah. it's, you have to leave there, you know, leave that surrounding in order to make it. So mm -hmm. before somebody recognize you, right. but you can get your, um, you can build your following mm -hmm. uh, right. where you live and, and it takes me, you, mm -hmm. you together and what we're doing right now, networking together and trying to help one another, that's the only way I see it yes, can happen. We, but, we uh, have to do that. But it, it, it is lacking in, in the Las Vegas area because there's not, you have to create things. Yes. yes. I noticed uh, since I've been here 23 and some years, you have to create things. And if and when you create things, then other people follow you. Exactly. But if exactly. it's not created already, then guess what? It's not done. Yes. So it's up to us to as create. independent artists mm -hmm. to create. start that and create that network system. I and because I know a few other uh, independent artists here as well that yes. have the same situation that we have. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? As far as we don't get discovered, we spend all of our money. Mm -hmm. uh, getting studio work done, mm -hmm. getting the records. I know I do. Mm -hmm. yeah, I've been doing lot. it for it a long a time lot. now. Yes. And, it's, and it's, you know. And what do you think about this, Minnie? Yeah, just to collaborate on what um, she was saying earlier, um, being out of Sacramento, I had to come to Vegas to even get some kind of recognition also. So now I'm trying to learn how Vegas works with the individual artists here in um, yeah. Nevada. And so I'm just, I'll it's, try to, it's, it's much different here. Yeah. What about you, Denise? Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> okay. So so much you, we're going to get into this. Okay. okay. I, I have an issue with oh, Vegas on this. <clears throat> so I, I've been in Vegas for 30 years, and um, I, I came straight from being on tour with Ike and Tina Turner and their sons when I first moved here. Yeah. And, Back in the day, they, they really did support live music. Yes. But today, it's all about DJs, mm -hmm. nightclubs, and it's not really about the live music aspect. You really do have to create your own yes. show mm -hmm. and really try to work with the venue, like at the House of Blues, because like I have, we have our shows at, at yes. Mandalay Bay. Um, coming up on June 1st, and I had to create that. I had to contact them, and you know, for the release of my yeah, album, and yeah, and the people I work with, they were okay. So, so they're promoting the shows. Right, um, right. You have to do your own promotion. You really do. Right? You got to create your own venue, your yes. own show, and and look for the right venue, because because not right. every venue is right. That's true. For original songs versus that's covers. That's true. Yeah. So maybe so. that's what will take. Um, what it takes to get the ball rolling in Vegas. Yeah. Now, I mean, exactly. I uh, my issue is like coming from Los Angeles, and I grew up in the industry. Yeah. I grew up all around it, yeah. and I was behind the camera and in front, and being around people like yeah. all the all yeah. the major people, all the record labels, and what I've learned is they don't take Vegas artists seriously. Yeah, and the reason is, and I'm thinking the reason is, is because we're not out front here. So when they come to Las Vegas, they just see tribute and all this, you know, tribute artists and, um, you know, that's good because that's a whole different yeah. set of artistry. But I think it needs to be more balanced. Yeah. You know, they don't see the other side. You know, we have our tribute artists, which are amazing, but we also should have venues that support um, the original, art, original, original artists. artists. That's why we're here because yeah. I think you guys all are incredible, and I think that I we know the we know the stigma yeah. with with Vegas, and it's we're we're here to say that it's not really true, and we're here to say that we're about to change it. Yeah. And um, you ladies are the ones that's going to set it off. Yes. Yeah. Seriously, yeah. seriously. Yeah. Let's talk about let's talk about what we are doing. 
Yes. Well, let's talk about you guys and what you're yes. doing in Vegas, what you're doing with your careers and how, all the things that coming up. Ivana, you can start. Okay. And you well, are this queen. Yes. Yes. It's 31 Flavors. It's my nickname. <laughs> so anyway. Uh, <laughs> Well, actually, I, um, I'm a recording artist, and I have three CDs, original music, and um, I don't work on it as much, but however, what I try to do in all of my performances, even though they may be cover gigs, I yes. do some of my original music to be, because I do have music to sell, and if I don't sell it, nobody else is going to sell it, so, and um, I'm also... Um, Working on something that's really true and dear to my heart, I um, um, I do a salute to the Queen of Soul, Aretha Franklin. Yeah. I actually do. That's awesome. And um, that's an independent project as well. It was a yes. vision of mine, and uh, uh, because it's a backstory to that. Why did I choose to do Aretha Franklin? Well, I'm not doing Aretha Franklin. I'm doing her music. I'm saluting yes. her music. Yes. Because the first song I ever learned how to sing from beginning to end was an Aretha Franklin song, nice. Chain of Food. I um, had this vision back in July of last year, of 2018, to uh, do another show, which I had done the show two years prior. And I said, okay, I did it one time, and it was a lot of work and effort. I did everything from the ruta to the tuba. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I know how to operate a production show now because nice. I did everything myself. It's an independent project and stuff. So I asked a lot of friends. So two years later, I said, you know what? For my birthday of last year, for my birthday present to myself, I'll recreate the Aretha Franklin show. And I said, this time, I mean, all kind of visions were coming to me. This time, you're going to give it a name. Yes. So I gave it a name, which Miss Aretha Franklin, at this time, God rest her soul, she wasn't, she hasn't, hadn't passed away yet. Yes. And so this is a whole month and a half prior to this. And to be wow. honest, I didn't really even know she was that sick. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So my vision, again, I wanted to do a birthday celebratory oh, for wow. myself. And uh, in the interim of all of that, um, she passed away. So now it has a little bit more meaning to it because yes. I really salute her for putting that spirit in me to even think I could sing. You yes. know, it's like, yes. I, you know, you mimic people when you're little and she things. She was so inspirational. And, and yeah. so it, I used to think I was her. I used to think I was her daughter when I realized I wasn't her. <laughs> so I was like, I'm going to get mine in one way or the other. So, yeah, it, yeah. you know, four decades and some later, I'm still in the industry and I say, you know what? I'm, don't impersonate. Yes. I've never impersonated, mm -hmm. you know, yes. for a living. Just exactly. I just yes. wanted to be myself. Here are the songs that influence it's my life. Yes. And everybody that's in this show has to sing an Aretha Franklin song. Yes. Your way, but yes. it has to be an Aretha Franklin song. I that's like awesome. That. I like and then I got my awesome. own original music in it just because I wanted to be part of me too. And, and, yes. and I'll make the reference of if Miss Aretha Franklin was a, a recording today, yes. she just may sing this song. You know? yes. So I'm inspired and I'm looking for help because it's hard to do it all yes, by yourself. To, I have spent all of my money, but that's what being independent is all yeah. about. Yes. You know, but it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great struggle, <laughs> yes. but is it fun all the time? No. no so I do fun. need help. I need supporters. When yes. I advertise the show, please support it. I try please. not to make the tickets so overly priced that I can get, you know, people to come and, and help me yes. uh, with the show and the people that particular um, that participate with me. I have an awesome band I named Peach Time yeah. and some yeah. awesome I singers that. I named <laughs> Swap. Woo! Yes, because I swap them out and yes. whoever I get in there in that swap situation can sing. Yeah. Yes. You know, they can just bring it. Yeah. And I that's what it. I want. I'm not a selfish entertainer. I want to share my I'm stage like, with one. other yeah. people that can fit yeah. what I'm doing what though. Doing. It has yeah. to fit what I'm yeah. doing. Yeah. Just because I know you and love you don't, doesn't mean that what you bring fits what I'm doing. Absolutely. But if it does, I want it. Yes. You know, and I'm gonna ask. I've already asked her. Yeah, oh, yeah. Denise I'm, already. I'm, I'm <laughs> you know, but you see in my show, I mean, her because it's yeah. like she brings what the, the energy the, she has the styling in there. Yes, yes. You know what I mean? That yes. can pull this off because it has to 
fit in the whole pot. Yeah. And you I see, like what she says is exactly my, what, I'm, what I'm trying to express. It's like as an artist or independent artist, you have to pull together, collab sometimes, help each other, support each yes. other, because it, all it does is help you, mm -hmm. you know? And because we're all in the same situation. Yeah. Amber. Oh, man. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, am I, I know not that doing. Really <laughs> I'm just telling you now it's going to be a part two of this show. So, um, wow, my music journey has actually been crazy. Um, I thank God every day because the one thing that people ask me all the time is what is your goal? What is your plan? Yeah. And I've told people the same thing since I started singing, which is I have none. That once you once you say, oh, I want to win a Grammy, oh, I want to record this, that's putting a cap on your. You're putting a day. cap. I don't there do it. There is no limit. Every day, I just ask God to put me on a wave that I can ride. Absolutely. And so when I was 18, um, that was the first time my acting coach heard me sing. Wow. And she didn't tell me that she heard me sing because she was gone. I was just in the studio singing by myself. And she signed me up for this um, like two week intensive workshop in LA. And at the end of it, I got to audition for producers from America's Got Talent, American yes. Idol. But at that point, I was not ready. I yes. had never sang in front of people before. The person who ran the workshop, his name was Nick Cooper. And he became my vocal coach. He's actually a vocal coach on American Idol. His artist just won, nice. which was dope. But um, he kind of took me under his wing, developed me. And then one day, he put me in a room and he was like, oh, you thought, oh you thought you were going to go in the recording studio? No, you're going to sit right here. I'm going to play some beats for you and you're going to write. And I'm like, I've never written a song before. He's like, well, you're going to do it today. And ever since then, I've been writing songs every day. Every day, I wake I up. I love this. Even, even I if it's this. just an idea. Why? So fast forward to now. Um, after you know, I started finding my sound. I decided that I wanted to start working on my first project. So about a year ago, I started my first EP. I finished it maybe three months ago, so it's in post production, and we're ready to talk about distribution and all of that. And. Then I kind of let myself go a little bit more because I recently reconnected with somebody that I grew up with from the East Coast. I'm originally from Washington, D.C. And you know, out there we have that neo soul vibe going on. And so when I did my first EP, it was straight pop, which is also coming out soon. Um, but it was straight pop. It was a mixture of songs that were written for me and songs that I wrote myself. Um, but this project, um, that I'm gonna drop in the summer is really close to my heart because it brings in some of that home sound. Oh, I love it. Um, so, in addition, in, and in addition to that, um, of course, I'm on 88.1. So, the crazy thing about that opportunity is that it opened my eyes to something different that I wanted to do because originally when I thought about my music it was okay so let me promote myself on my social media and go out to LA and you know get all that stuff done but I kind of had that epiphany like there are people who want to make it out of Vegas who are my age uh -oh. but they don't <laughs> go for it or they don't know how to go about it because they've how never seen it. somebody do it. I yeah. mean, we had 702 come out of here, but that's not my generation. Right. Since then, who my age have you seen? And so my whole focus ever since I've been on 88.1 and and been doing music out in Vegas in I've been working with Vegas grown producers, wow. Vegas studios, all of that, people that I never knew existed because my thing is who's going to it's like you said who's going to start. Yeah. yeah. And start from it's crazy because you ladies are amazing established right here in vegas yeah. and you're but yet you're talking about the same issues that i see now yeah and so it's like you guys are doing it for each other and for other artists but i feel like i have to do it for my generation as well yeah absolutely so yeah that's that's what i have coming up also i this almost slipped my mind as well but craig knight who is the general manager of 88.1 
is putting together a girl group. Ah. So he's asked me to be a part of the girl group. It's going to be me, um, Tiffany LeMay, who was on this last season of American Idol, um, Cameron Levert, who's this, the daughter of Gerald Levert, and um, Ariel. I just think that's so, Ariel Knight.